So in the last video, we turned this HP 800 G1 into a gaming PC by just throwing in an NVIDIA T400 graphics card. But in today's video, we're gonna turn this into this with just a case and no additional parts. So let's jump into the build and see just how we do that. So of course, we're gonna start first with our disassembly of our HP 800 G1, starting off with our drive. So just taking out the SSD that I installed in the previous video, and then of course, taking out our hard drive as well. So we have one and a quarter terabytes of storage in this thing, 250 gig SSD, and then that one terabyte HDD for Windows on the SSD, and then games on the hard drive. So now it's just going through and removing a lot of the cables, getting stuff unclipped from out of the HP 800 G1 so that we can eventually get our power supply out as well as our motherboard. So first just kind of going through and getting everything uh, disconnected from the motherboard and eventually right now we will go ahead and take out our power supply. Um, so uh, actually before we do that let's take out our graphics card which is our Nvidia Quadro T400 and now we'll take that power supply out. So here we go, pretty simple process, three screws and then a little clip that holds the back of the power supply in place, but we can remove that and now comes our motherboard. Um, so pretty simple process taking out the screws. Uh, the other thing with this case is that everything is mounted to the back of the case, including the CPU cooler. So we're gonna have to remove all of the screws, including the CPU cooler screws so that we can take out the entire motherboard and this will actually probably make the installation of the CP cpu cooler in our new case a little bit more difficult uh, but we'll do that when the time comes uh, but there you go motherboards out and this case is all cleaned out and done and here we go with our new case so this is a cooler master case it is a micro atx case that way we just uh, keep it as small as possible for the size of our power supply and the size of our motherboard and all of that um, and this Cooler Master case is the MB320L ARGB. And here you can see our first issue, which is our power supply from the 800G1 is not a form factor easily used by any other case. So all I was able to do is actually take one of the fan screws for the power supply, undo that and use the one screw to hold our power supply in place. Not the best. I wouldn't recommend it overall for like a long term build that like you might be moving around a bunch. But for this, it's not too bad. So now we can throw in our motherboard and it's as simple as getting everything lined up with the standoffs and installing the same screws that were in the 800 G1. And once we get all of those screws installed and in place, the motherboard's good to go. Um, you could have installed the CPU cooler before this step, but I decided to do that afterwards, which we'll take a look at shortly. And now I'm just getting all of the cables connected, power cables from the power supply to the CPU and to the motherboard itself. And then we also have our USB 3 from the front panel of our case, as well as HD audio all connected there as well. Now, the difficult part here is also going to be your front panel connectors, but there's a little guide to get those installed. And for this motherboard, the SATA power actually comes off of the motherboard. So just plug that cable back in and then run those SATA connectors to the back of the case. We can use them for our hard drive and our SSD. Now this is where you'll see the difficulties I ran into with the CPU cooler. I was able to cut the tabs out of the back of the 800 G1 and those are gonna be used to actually install the cooler. So all we're gonna have is like these four tabs on the back of the motherboard holding the cooler in place, no back bracket, nothing like that. So it's not the best when it comes to just supporting the, the cooler, but it is a light cooler so it shouldn't be too difficult uh, or run into any issues with this type of installation method. So we'll get the cooler lined up from underneath and then we will go ahead and just slightly screw on those tabs so that we can eventually completely screw those in um, uh, right after uh, we get all of them lined up and just slightly thread it. So now we're just going through and tighten them up to their final torque um, and this wasn't too difficult of a process it was just more the fact that we didn't have a back plate to use. Um, so now comes really the final steps of this build, which is the fan connectors and our ARGB LED. So you do get this ARGB controller, uh, which comes with a button on the actual controller itself, but that's gonna be tucked away in the back of the case. And all this thing is is powered by a SATA power connector. So what we're eventually going to do, and you'll see it shortly, is actually use our power reset switch on the front of the case 
as a controller for the RGB fans that are in this. Um, and this, co this controller and, and the majority of them come with this two-prong header that will replace uh, the button. So it will either bypass the button that's on this little controller and you can use an external switch, which is what we're gonna use the, the reset button on the front of the case for. So now comes our HDD installation, super simple in this case. They come with two rails, you just pop them on to where the screws would go into your hard drive and then slide it into the hard drive cage. And the final step is the SSD. Uh, with these, you have these grommets that go into the back of the case. And then there's these four little standoffs that go into the back of the SSD. And it just friction fits it right in place so that you don't have to worry about screwing it in or anything like that. Easy removal, easy installation in this case. This case is super easy to build in and was honestly a real blast to, to be able to, to throw this uh, system together. Just one, due to the simplicity and two, due to just how easy everything is to, to put together. And now, of course, we're getting our uh, Quadro T400 installed. Super simple process there. Just make sure that you have the full size bracket on the Quadro so that it fits in this bigger case. A little bit of cable management and we're pretty much good to go. And what I ended up doing was actually using the uh, included fan um, splitter inside of the case. So it was a one pin to three pin kind of setup. And we're running all of the fans off of the CPU header. Uh, that's the only header on this motherboard. So all of the fans will ramp up when the CPU gets hot, even the front case fans, uh, as well as the, the fan on the CPU cooler itself. Uh, if I were to do anything else, I would probably get a controller, like a USB 2.0 controller. That way we can control the fans without the need of running it at the CPU speeds. So here we go. First startup and it worked right off the bat. Now I did have a power cycle for a, a few power cycles actually on the first startup. So it power cycled a few times and then eventually Windows started to populate and all was good there. But as you can see, the RGB fans are lit up and this thing finally looks like a gaming PC rather than our 800 d one Another thing you're going to run into is because of all the disconnections we made with the front panel headers, so you no longer have USB 2 connected, you no longer have the front audio like speaker connected, uh, you're gonna get that little boot message at the beginning. All you have to do is hit F1 on your keyboard and the system will start right up and boot into Windows as you can see. So we're booted into Windows and now I can show you that power reset switch controlling the RGB LEDs on the fans. All you gotta do is hit the reset button and your fans will change color or change pattern or whatever it is that that ARGB controller is going to shift around. So the case honestly looks really, really nice. Uh, it's plexi on the front and then there is a tempered glass side panel. And this case was right around $70, $75, so not super expensive. A little overkill for this size of a case and the build quality. I mean, there's still some things you'd like to see in a $75 case that aren't in this, but the process of building this was so easy that I would definitely recommend it. So there you go. I mean, the build process from turning this HP 800 G1 into a gaming PC in this Cooler Master case definitely took a little bit of time and, and a little bit of extra effort. One, I mean, the power supply really doesn't fit in this case. Uh, being that it is so proprietary, all we could get in was one screw. So I'm definitely going to upgrade that power supply in the next video. Um, and in terms of the CPU cooler, also a little bit of a weird installation process, having to cut the tabs out of the back of the 800 G1 in order to actually get the cooler installed on our motherboard. But everything besides that was pretty self-explanatory and pretty much the same as any other PC build. Uh, so yeah, I mean, now we have turned this HP 800 G1 into this awesome gaming PC, RGB and all, but I'm gonna do some more upgrades to this thing. So definitely stay tuned to the next video. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. And if you haven't already, get subscribed to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.